So you've just been picked up by Three Eye Atlas. Don't mind the Halloween prop rattling around because this interstellar visitor has just woken up after perihelion. On October 29, 2025, it slipped behind the sun at magnitude 9.5, but its path is already raising eyebrows. JPL's A1 and A2 parameters flag subtle real non-gravitational acceleration and a solar CME slammed its plasma environment days before. Everyone asks, does that mean alien tech or comet physics unleashed? Before we go any further, let's separate the measured facts from the wild theories, starting with what scientists actually see right now. From Earth's vantage point, Thry Atlas spent perihelion hidden almost directly behind the sun. This geometry shut down ground-based telescopes for several days, leaving even professional observatories waiting on the sidelines. Yet the blackout wasn't total. Spacecraft orbiting far from Earth, like the Punch mission, kept their eyes on the prize. By stacking images from late October, Punch managed to tease out a faint signal. Three Eye Atlas holding steady at about magnitude 9.5. That's far dimmer than what the naked eye can catch, and just at the edge for mid-sized amateur scopes, even under perfect skies. The trick is that space images don't face the same solar glare as telescopes on the ground. They can look closer to the sun's limb, picking out objects that would be lost in daylight or atmospheric haze. Still, the raw images are noisy, and the comet's light is smeared by the harsh background. Even with careful processing, the details are limited. No crisp tail, no dramatic jets, just a soft, condensed glow against the solar backdrop. As October gave way to November, the elongation, meaning the apparent angle between the comet and the sun, began to widen. This subtle shift means the comet is pulling away from the sun's glare, inching back into the realm of ground-based observation. Astronomers, both professional and amateur, are now watching for the first clear frames as it emerges into the dawn sky. For now, every new image comes with caveats. Brightness estimates are rough, the coma is unresolved, and the tail, if present, is barely hinted at. But the fact remains, despite being hidden by the sun at its closest approach, Three Eye Atlas did not disappear. With each passing day, its optical profile becomes just a bit clearer, and the data trickling in will soon let scientists chase down its exact position and motion. Precise tracking of Three Eye Atlas after perihelion has revealed a subtle, persistent mismatch between its predicted and observed positions, a right ascension offset measured in arc seconds. This isn't a sign of something exotic. It's a well-known quirk of active comets. When astronomers fit orbits to the data, they use a set of standard parameters, A1 and A2, to account for slight non-gravitational nudges in the comet's motion. These aren't random fudge factors. A1 captures acceleration along the Sun-comet line, while A2 covers sideways drift in the orbital plane for Three Eye Atlas. Recent JPL solutions list A1 around 1.7 x 10.6 and A2, about 7 x 10.7 astronomical units per day squared, to put that in context, these numbers fall right in line with moderately active comets elsewhere in the solar system. The source of these residuals is straightforward, outgassing. As sunlight warms the comet, jets of vaporized ice erupt from its surface, pushing it ever so slightly off course. The effect is small but measurable, especially when precise astrometric data from ALMA and ground-based observatories are stacked up over weeks. The Marsden formalism, the gold standard for comet orbit fitting, uses these A1 and A2 terms to model the extra push. When these parameters are included, the fit between observed and calculated positions drops to within the expected noise, typically inside one standard deviation for plausible values of nuclear size and activity. A JPL scientist summed it up. We're not seeing a spaceship. We're seeing standard cometry physics made extreme by a hypercharged solar wind. There's no need to invoke engines or artificial propulsion the measured accelerations match what you'd expect for a small active nucleus venting gas as it swings through the inner solar system. While the numbers might look surprising to those outside the field, for comet scientists they're business as usual. The real intrigue comes from how these natural processes play out under the wild conditions of an interstellar visitor, not from any unexplained anomaly. Plasma isn't just an exotic word from physics class. It's the state of matter that dominates the space around comets like Three Eye Atlas. Five main plasma processes set the stage for everything that happens near a sunlit comet. First is photoionization, 
Ultraviolet light from the sun knocks electrons off gas molecules streaming from the comet, turning neutral atoms into charged ions. Next comes charge exchange, as solar wind ions crash into cometary atoms, swapping electrons and spawning new ions that light up in X-rays. Then there's mass loading. As those fresh ions flood the solar wind, they slow it down and pile it up, stretching and reshaping the magnetic environment around the comet. The fourth process is the bow shock, like a wave at the front of a boat where the solar wind slams into the comet's expanding atmosphere and is forced to slow down abruptly. Finally, there's the ionopause, sometimes called the cometopause. This invisible boundary forms where the comet's own ions push back hard enough to carve out a protective bubble, separating the comet's plasma from the solar wind beyond. Each of these processes is at work around 3i Atlas right now, shaping its behavior, its brightness, and even the way it drifts through space. Dust grains near 3i Atlas aren't just passive passengers in the solar wind. They're active players in a microscopic drama. As the comet sweeps through the inner solar system, each grain gets bombarded by high-energy particles and ultraviolet light. This constant exposure builds up electric charge on the surface of the grains. When the charge reaches a tipping point, the grain can't hold together any longer. The result is a tiny explosion. One grain fragments into a cloud of even smaller pieces, each with a much higher area-to-mass ratio. Suddenly, these fragments respond more strongly to solar radiation and electromagnetic forces, veering off or accelerating in unpredictable ways. This process doesn't just shuffle dust around. It can cause sudden spikes in the comet's brightness and brief changes in its apparent motion. Micro-explosions like these are a natural part of comet activity, especially when solar outbursts inject extra energy into the environment. The same mechanism has been caught in action before, most famously by Rosetta at Comet 67P, where a surge in charged dust reshaped the coma almost overnight. For 3i Atlas, every flash and flicker in the data could trace back to these invisible but powerful dust events. In July 2015, a spacecraft orbiting Comet 67P, Rosetta, caught something no one had quite seen before. As a coronal mass ejection from the sun slammed into the comet, Rosetta's magnetometer registered a surge in the local magnetic field. The readings shot up from a baseline of around 50 nanotesla to nearly 300 nanotesla in a matter of hours. That's not a minor uptick. It's a six-fold leap, the kind that turns a gentle magnetic breeze into a wall. For the Rosetta team, the surprise was immediate. One engineer caught on the mission voice loop called it a magnetic wall. The instrument scrambled to keep up as the plasma environment around 67P transformed almost overnight. This spike wasn't just a curiosity. It revealed that when the sun sends a shock wave through the solar system, a comet's plasma cocoon doesn't respond gradually. It reacts in jumps. The entire magnetic structure can inflate, compress or even break apart in response to the incoming solar storm. During the 2015 event, Rosetta's particle instruments recorded sudden changes in ion flows and dust activity. The comet's plasma boundary, the so-called cometopause, shifted outward, then snapped back as the storm passed. These changes happened on timescales of minutes to hours, not days. For plasma physicists, the Rosetta 67P event became a textbook case. It showed that comets are not just icy snowballs with a gentle tail. They can be wrapped in magnetic armor, reshaped by the sun's mood swings. The 300 nanotesla spike stands as a concrete number, a reference point for what's possible when a comet and a solar eruption cross paths. Kiersa's own summary put it simply, CME hits can literally wrap a comet in a plasma blanket, supercharging its environment for hours or days. This is why analogies with Rosetta matter for 3i Atlas. When a comet rounds the sun during a period of solar fireworks, the plasma and magnetic effects can dwarf anything caused by dust and gas alone. The numbers from Rosetta set the scale for what scientists are now watching for in the data from 3i Atlas as it emerges from its own solar encounter. On October 21, 2025, the Sun unleashed a massive coronal mass ejection from active region 4246, just as 3i Atlas neared perihelion. This eruption, captured in white light by the GOES-19 CCI coronagraph, blasted away from the Sun's far side, missing Earth but sending a shockwave out across the inner solar system. For objects like 3i Atlas, timing and geometry are everything. 
The comet's path placed it near the ecliptic, not far from the longitude of the eruption. When a CME of this scale erupts, its expanding front can sweep through a broad swath of space, especially if it's a wide or so-called halo event.